What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the project Zephyrus ROM based on Android 13 and the version of this is 13.1.5. This is the 17th November 2022 build. So the latest one as of right now, it comes with November security patch. Here you can see. Let me show you the about section. So this is how it looks. We get the project Zephyrus logo up top and we have the Android version as Android 13. And this is how it looks if you tap and hold on it, as you can see, it changes the emojis and stuff. Let me tell you, if you want to flash this ROM on your device, you can definitely do that by watching the video from the description. The project Zephyrus version is mentioned 13.1.5 and we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 Azure Plus kernel. The device maintainer's name is written as Kibria 5. So huge thanks to the maintainers and developers of this ROM. Talking about the system settings, this is how it looks. We have system updater and you can check for updates whenever you want to from right here. And of course, you can donate to the developers from here. Let me go back. We have the gestures and extras. Here you will get the advanced reboot, the quick torch and we go into the gesture navigation. And in the settings of it, we have the full screen gestures, the immersive gestures. Then we have the swipe to invoke assistant and we have the left edge right edge customization and we have the haptic feedback but there is no way to customize the spill length or the pill bar thickness over here let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations then we have the invert layout for the back and recent button if you're using two or three button navigations you can use this feature and we have the one-handed mode too that works fine also we have the press and hold power button actions and the swipe to take screenshot let me show you it actually works perfectly fine we have the share edit delete and the capture mode feature if you go and capture more as you can see this is how you can scroll like this to actually capture more stuff from the screen and you can edit it out if you want to you can draw a doodle or something if you want to from right here and you can save it share it or delete it from right here we have the music controls the fingerprint error and success vibration let me go back that's about it for the gestures now talking about the customizations of this room yes they are present but each thing is present inside a particular settings like in the sound settings you will get sound tweaks and in the display settings you will get the status bar customization and stuff i'll show you each of them but let me show you the home screen first this is how it looks like we have the pixel launcher by default here let me actually show you by going to the home screen settings and here you can only disable the suggestions and stuff if you want to but there is no double tap to sleep or something because again this is the pixel launcher to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and as you can see the scrolling is fine once it loads up and if you swipe up you will get the app drawer you can search for any particular app that you are willing to and swiping down will get you to the notification or the quick setting panel this is how it looks it is just like the evolution x rom so even in the light theme the quick setting panel stays totally dark but the notification panel only will stay white and even the settings panel if i go as you can see it is white so yeah this is how it is and let me talk about the widgets yes the widget animation and stuff is working fine if you're noticing but the battery widget i tried to add it it's not loading up that's how it is and we have this other widget the subscribe account widget and stuff it is working perfectly fine now let's talk about the stock camera and this is the camera that you will get and this is a gcam go i would say which is present by default and in the settings of it you will get this kind of settings it looks beautiful this is a newer kind of gcam i guess and it takes basic pictures and we take another one maybe my hand shook a little more so yeah as you can see this one came out to be good so yeah the colors are good enough i would say the picture quality is good and even with the front camera and stuff as you can see this is how it looks you can take even portrait pictures if you want so yeah this is in portrait mode as you can see the edge direction is perfectly fine even though my background is quite overexposed picture came out to be really good no issues whatsoever even with face retouching and stuff everything is working perfectly fine so yeah in my opinion this is a really great camera to have at least by default but of course it's not as good as miui camera or something and there is a video settings and stuff you can shoot videos with it of course and we have the translate feature as well then we also have this filters option i don't know how it works but yes this option is there let me talk about the quick setting panel this is how it looks and you can edit and add even more toggles if you want as you can see plethora of options are there you can add any toggle that you are willing to let me show you which ones i have added i have the mobile data the wi-fi and the bluetooth flashlight dark theme auto rotate the always on display toggle is also there you can toggle it for charge as well and we have the night light then we have the hotspot the screen recording and of course you can record the device audio and microphone audio both at the same time we have the bigger file size limit for that then we have the battery saver do not disturb the google home controls reboot toggle is also there but you have to long press on it if you want to directly reboot to the recovery right now heads up you can disable that's good we have the data saver the nearby share and the airplane mode as well 
This is how the brightness slider looks by the way and we can toggle the auto brightness from right here and the power menu looks like this. You can go into the advanced reboot and directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Now let's talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like. We have the percentage up top and if you scroll down more we get to see the battery temperature but there is no battery charging cycle or something. They are simply missing from right here. So if you're used to having that it does not have that particular feature of seeing the battery health particularly. But we do have the idle manager and the left battery text and even the battery style and stuff for the status bar is right here. We do have the icon landscape right or left, then we have the circle, dot circle, even the big circle and the big dot circle, everything is there. So you can choose the battery icons from right here in the battery settings. So that's really convenient I would say. And we also have the battery percentage next to the icon or inside the icon choosing option. And we have the battery saver, the battery usage. Now let's talk about the usage actually. I have been measuring it with the Aku battery app. And let me show you with this, I have got about seven hours plus of screen on time. That's again a huge amount of number for this. But let me mention that my battery is a new one. I have replaced the battery, not our original one, but yes, this is from AI power or something, local brand, I guess, in India. With this battery, I have been getting really amazing battery life. No problems whatsoever that I have faced. Even fast charging has been working perfectly fine for me. No issues whatsoever with fast charging that I have faced. Yes, the device does get heated up a little bit with a 33 watt fast charger, but with 18 watt, it's perfectly fine. The charging speed, it was about 1452 MA average and the screen on charging speed was 2500 plus MA average. Also, you can see the total time it took. So it took about two hour and 11 minutes, I guess, of the two, for the total charge. But of course, if you charge 80% plus or like up to 100%, it definitely charges really slowly above 80%. So that's how it is. But yeah, from zero to 60, it goes really fast. No issues whatsoever with that. Now in the health section, I have dropped the battery below 15%. That's why it took the cycle count. And as you can see, the battery health for me right now shows as a 95%, which is at about 3787 mAh because I replaced the battery. But if you haven't, you will get about five to five and a half hours of screen on time if your battery is very old. Regardless of that, the battery life is good enough if your battery health is actually good. In the sound settings, we have this media called ring at sort of volume controls. This is how it looks like. And of course, you can switch the output device of the volume and just notice the animation it looks beautiful. Even when it's not connected to a Bluetooth device, you can actually see this panel. That's good. But yes, with a connected to a Bluetooth device or Bluetooth speaker, it will actually look even better and you will get an option right now. Choose PR a new device on the bottom. So yeah, and here, let me show you. You can expand the volume panel just like this and putting the phone into mute or vibrate from right here option. So yeah, everything is just flawless, I would say. And we have the smart pause, the live caption and the media option. Then we have the default alarm sound and stuff. Then the screenshot sound, you can disable from right here, charging sound and vibration options. Left volume dialogue, you can disable it if you want the volume panel to appear on the right side. Then we have the mute media volume on silent, then vibrate to indicate call status. Per app volume control is also there. You can enable it if you want. Then we have the music visualizer. This is just a visualizer for the lock screen, I guess. Then we have the Mi Sound Enhancer. From here, you can choose the output of the 3.5mm headphone jack and you can choose the headphone options to Youth Edition or the Mi Earphone Basic or other options. There are plethora of options as you are noticing. Also, we have the other preset, the EQ preset options. You do have the bass booster, the bass reduction, treble reduction, all those options. In the display settings, this is how it looks. We have the brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness. And we have this auto brightness icon as well. This is for the series bar, I guess, this one. And we have the brightness control. So you can slide a finger on the shaders bar to actually increase or decrease the brightness. Again, a really handy feature for me at least. Now let me show you the next ones, the lock screen settings. Here we have the skip lock screen, the allow face unlock option. And we have the secure quick setting tiles require unlocking and stuff. And we have the control from lock device. This is for the Google home controls, I guess. Then we have the FOD icon background. <laughs> this device does not have FOD, so this feature is not really working, I guess. And we have the always on display scheduling option. You can definitely do that, but I don't know why you would want to use always on display on this device because it does not have a AMOLED display. We have this wake screen for notification. Always show time info is the always on display. And the swipe to wake option is there. Allow waking the device by swiping up or down on the device is dozing. No, it doesn't work, but yes, double tap to wake is actually working. No issues. I'll show you the finger scan speed and stuff later, but let me just unlock quickly. And here we have the dark theme. In the dark theme settings, we have the scheduling option again, and we have the display size and text. This is the new kind of feature of Android 13. Let me go back. We have the colors. 
set to saturated but you can control the RGB of the screen then we have the my camera privacy stuff then the location privacy indicator even the fonts you can customize from right here even we have the LG smart gothic the oneplus slate and we have the nothing dot font and stuff if you want to have those even Ubuntu Harmony OS etc options are there then we have the icons and we don't have plethora of icons but yes we do have the default the Akeras and the Oxygen OS outline py or something like that and in the signal icons there are good amount of options i guess and we have the wi-fi icons too i have been using with the stroke one then we have the auto red apps the full screen apps and the prevent accidental wake up is the pocket detection the double tap to wake is also there and we have the double tap on lock screen to sleep and we have the status bar double tap option and the double tap to check phone this is disabled because it's just the always on display kind of thing and we have the wake up on plug option you can disable it if you want to and in the ambient display we do have the pickup and stuff if you want to use those you definitely can in the wallpaper settings this is how it looks and in the change wallpaper section let me show you this is how it looks we have plethora of google kind of wallpapers and i have been using with a like unsplash wallpaper i guess is this one so with that it looks good and here we have 16 colors for the wallpaper and the basic colors both options then we have the dark theme the themed icons and in the grid option we have up to 5x5 five five. So after recording the video, I just realized there are more customizations, but they are hidden in the app settings and notification settings and as well as in the network and internet settings. You can see that from the screenshots. Now jumping into the security, this is how it looks. In the settings of it, we have the power button instantly locks. Then we have face unlock and fingerprint both option. But in the more settings, there is no app lock or something. That is kind of disappointing because most Android 13 ROM right now has some kind of app lock. But here you don't get any app lock as of right now. I would have loved to see the app lock feature over here, but that is not present simply. Now let's talk about some basic things. Yes, the safety net passes right out of the box. So you should not worry about banking apps not being working or something. The safety net works right out of the box. So you should not worry about it. Also, the DRM info stays as L1. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any problems. Also, the IR Blaster should be working great over here. You should not worry about it if you are noticing this light simply means the IR Blaster is working perfectly fine. And from the Photos Backup settings, you will see there is that Pixel Unlimited Backup. So if you are looking for the Google Photos Unlimited Backup and stuff, yes, this feature is present in this ROM. And you can actually go into the split top mode if you want, just like this. And you can scale the apps particularly like this. You can swap the apps position from right here. And it works perfectly fine with the split top feature. No issues with Android 13 split top. And this is how the, the recent panel again looks like. We have the screenshot, the select option. If you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from right here. The RAM management is good enough over here. You should not be having any issues. Now let me show you the Fingbit scanner speed. Well, if I tap the Fingbit scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. So yeah, the Fingbit scanner is not a problem whatsoever. I have not faced any kind of issues. Let me try one more time. And even let me just enable the always on display so that I can show you if it's working. And as you can see, the always on display is working, but I have to clear the notifications. Okay, so the always on display when it's on, the double data to wake goes bonkers, it doesn't work. So you have to press the power button and that's when you go into the lock screen. Let me tap the finger scanner to unlock. Let me clear all the notifications. Now let's just double tap on the status bar. And as you can see, right now you do get the bigger kind of clock of always on display. And if I tap the finger scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. So no issues whatsoever with the Fingbit scanner that I have faced. Now let me show you the face unlock. For that, you have to go into the lock screen. And from here, if I swipe up, it shows recognizing face and it unlocks. So you can guess the speed of that. Let me try one more time. So yeah, the face unlock is working fine. You should not worry about it. Only thing that I'm disappointed about is that there is no app lock. But otherwise, I would say this is a good daily driver. The wall decalling and stuff should be working fine. And here are the performance benchmarks like the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. Let me in the comments what you guys think about the latest project Zephyr ROM on this Redmi Note 7 Pro. It has been running really good even for the Redmi Note 10 Pro and stuff. I think this ROM will be coming. But these are the features overall mostly that you will get with this latest build of the project Zephyr ROM. So do share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest project Zephyrus from based on Android 13. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is T2 from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.